Happy Wednesday. How you doing? Hey, we're going to do another book review. This time it's Kenneth Copeland's book, The Blessing of the Lord, It Makes Rich. Huh? This is going to be good. Say this with me. The rest of my life is the best of my life. The best of my life is the rest of my life. Everything I touch turns to gold. I am smart, getting smarter every day. I am extremely talented. Great things are coming my way. I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. I am made rich by the poverty of Jesus. Everything always works out for me. I am a wonderful person. Pastor Jim is a wonderful pastor. Pastor Jim is the ultimate pastor. Say that. Pastor Jim is the ultimate pastor because I get results. There is nobody doing what I do. I don't know if anybody can do what I do. We've got some incredible revelation, especially in the power in the name of Jesus, which makes things happen for people. We get incredible results. As far as I know, this is the only phone number in the country where you can call and actually get your prayers answered or get healed or get a new job or find whatever it is you need. As far as I know, I'm the only one doing this. So nobody needs to be sick or broke as long as I'm here. And I don't mind telling you, I can get anybody healed of any sickness or disease through the power in the name of Jesus. I can move anybody from poverty into abundance through the power in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus has no boundaries, no limitations. Jesus said, all things are possible to them that believes. Call me if you need prayers answered. I'll get them answered for you. One thing about this ministry and about me is I'm here. And I'm available. All you have to do is call that number. Now, if you call me on a regular basis, then I require that you watch the videos every day. Or at least keep up with them. Because that makes it easy for me to get things done for you. It increases your faith and strengthens your spirit. You watch those videos for 30 days. You will never be the same. Read my books if you can. It's not a requirement, but I would highly recommend it. And uh, you will be amazed at the changes in your life. I wrote a book on the blessing. Kenneth Copeland wrote a book on the blessing called The Blessing of the Lord. So what I'm going to do today is talk about his book. Huh? Talk about his book. I talk a lot about mine. Now, today, I'm going to talk about his book. Glory to God, you will be blessed. This is good stuff. Make sure you call me today when you do your offerings and your donations, and especially your tithe, so I can speak God's word for word blessing over you. God gave us a blessing to speak over the people. He said to Moses, he said, tell the priest this is how I want the people to be blessed. And this is what the priest shall say. He gave it to us word for word. I do it, and believe me, I got a church full of people who will tell you it works. I've got partners all over, all over the world who will tell you it works. In my own life, I went from being $300,000 in debt to living in absolute abundance. And I'm not embarrassed to say what God has done for me. Beautiful home out here on the beach, paid for. Cars, a new one, plus a new truck sitting in the garage, paid for. Airplane, paid for. Everything we have is paid for. We can go where we want, do what we want. I've never lived like this before. 10 years ago, we were struggling to pay our bills. $300,000 in debt. The blessing of the Lord. What Kenneth Copeland talks about did that for us. 
And this is one of the books I read on my way to getting the blessing. Because when I realized in 2012 that the blessing of the Lord was available to me, I went after it. And so, of course, I read everything I could find, watched all the videos I could find, read every article I could find. I mean, I devoured everything concerning the blessing because I got a hold of a verse in uh, Galatians chapter 3, verse 29. It says, If you be Christ, you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise, which is the blessing. An heir means... You inherit. So I had everybody in our church saying a hundred times a day, the blessing of the Lord is my inheritance. The blessing of Abraham is my inheritance. Now, he, he titles his book, The Blessing of the Lord. I titled my book, Just the Blessing. But the blessing we are both talking about is the blessing of Abraham. Now, I got to tell you, right up front, at the beginning of this review, this book review, this is a great book. It's a great book. He goes through this book. I highly recommend this book. It's thick, got a lot of stuff in it, but I highly recommend it because the thing about Kenneth Copeland and the blessing is, you have to understand where he's coming from when you listen to him teach and preach about the blessing. And you have to understand where he is coming from when you read his books. And that is, he's coming from a position of someone who has incredible faith for the blessing of the Lord or the blessing of Abraham to provide his needs for him. He has faith in the blessing. I've heard him say, the blessing will take care of me. Well, is that true? Is that true? Well, the only way you can find out if something's true or not is by going to the scriptures. So on that point alone, I would say, let's go to a scripture found in Genesis chapter 26, the story of Isaac. Now in that land, there was a famine. After, same, just like the famine during the days of Abraham. And Isaac was surrounded by the Philistines. So he went to the king of the Philistines, which was Abimelech, and he said to him, I'm going to Egypt. I'm gonna take my family down to Egypt because there's no food here. I can't water my herds. I can't feed my family. My servants have nothing to eat. I'm going to Egypt. But God intervened. God stopped him and he said, no, you stay right here because you're in the promised land. You walk about this land. You live in this land and I will bless you. And I will perform the oath in your life that I swore to your father, Abraham, which was the blessing. God said to Abraham, leave your family, leave your home, go to a place where you don't know, and I will bless you. Then the priest came out, uh, Melchizedek, with bread and wine, had communion, and blessed him. And Abraham tithed to the blessing. Well, Abraham became rich. Now, God is telling Isaac, stay here in this place where there's no rain. And you're surrounded by the enemy. And I will bless you. Now, what's he going to do? Notice that God did not tell Isaac he would provide for him. There's a huge difference 
between being provided for and being blessed. A person who is provided for barely gets along. A person who is blessed lives in abundance. So Isaac stayed right there. And because God had said he would bless him and perform that oath, Isaac sowed during a famine and reaped a hundredfold. He dug wells. Every time he dug a well, he found water. The Philistines went behind him and filled him in. He just dig another one, he found water. During a famine, he found water every time he dug. Now, if somebody's out there digging wells during a famine when there's no rain and they're finding water, something is going on. Finally, the Philistines said, that's enough. Abimelech came to him and he said, I know you must be blessed. He was afraid of him. The Philistines became afraid of Isaac because he was so blessed. Does the blessing of the Lord provide for you? Yes. You know what? He's right. He's right to have faith in the blessing because it will provide for you. The faith in the blessing will allow you to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else is given to you. Another thing that he talks about in this book is the Garden of Eden blessing and how the Garden of Eden blessing will grow up around a person who receives the blessing. Now, is that true? That's a big question. Is that true or not? If that's not true, then this book is not scriptural. Let's find out. Abraham was blessed. Did he live in his own Garden of Eden? Yes. Did Isaac live in his own Garden of Eden? Yes. See, when these people got a hold of the blessing, the blessing of the Lord, the Garden of Eden, the Garden of Eden is a place where everything is provided to you in abundance. That's a Garden of Eden. We live in our own Garden of Eden here. I'm telling you, we do. Kenneth Copeland lives in his own Garden of Eden. He has everything he needs. He doesn't sit around believing for anything. Kenneth Hagin, when he got a hold of the blessing in 1975, that's when he stopped believing for everything. The blessing will take you to a whole different level. It takes you to a level where you stop believing for money to pay the rent. You stop believing for a car to drive. You stop believing for money to pay your bills. Everything just comes to you. That's where we are in our lives. We've been here for several years. Everything we need comes to us. Is the Garden of Eden in our lives like he says it would be? Oh, yeah. And that is scriptural. Because in Deuteronomy chapter 11, God tells the children of Israel when they're getting ready to go into the promised land, you shall have days of heaven upon the earth. That's the blessing. The blessing of the Lord makes rich, he says down here at the bottom of his book. Does the blessing of the Lord make you rich? If you get a hold of the blessing, I got news for you. You're going to be rich. You're going to have more money than you need. Now, I don't have millions and millions and billions of dollars, but I got more money than I need. I have money left over to pass out to people who need it, to give to people, to help ministries. You know what? I pay a big chunk of his television bills. I am one of the people responsible for him putting out the message he does. I will receive the same reward he does. And it's the blessing of the Lord that does that. Get those, his 